All right, so in these first examples, we're supposed to rewrite the statements into equivalent statements without using the term marginal. Now, what does marginal mean? Remember, marginal cost or marginal revenue or marginal uh, profit, that was the change. And so what we can say is when we do uh, a conversion from marginal cost, we can change, say what it's doing. So on this one, if we want to change it to without, we'd say at a production level <clears throat> of 500 units. Now, instead of marginal cost, what we're going to say is the cost is increasing by $17 per unit, OK? <clears throat> so the key thing is, is we're converting that marginal cost to the cost is increasing by because it's positive. And, and remember, we're looking at the tangent. And so it's a slope. It's increasing. And so we'd have something like that. Now, when we have this one, it says <clears throat> when the weekly sales are 500 units, the marginal revenue. So we have marginal revenue we have to convert to uh, just the revenue is increasing by. And then we also have in this one a marginal cost. So we have to do two conversions. Now this one is also increasing, it looks like, because it's $13 per unit. So it's all positive. So again, all we're going to do is rewrite this. Then we'd say the revenue is increasing by $10 per unit. And <clears throat> the cost is increasing by uh, $13 per unit. Okay. And that's how we would do it. Again, marginal cost we have to think of as it's, you know, we're looking at the the tangent line, so it's increasing. Now, if we'd had, say, maybe a, a negative slope or something like that, so it had been a negative $10 per unit, we'd say that it was decreasing by $10 per unit instead. So you have to kind of check out the signs and, and see what, what that is all including. All right, so here it says, given the units of measure for production and the units of measure for cost or revenue, write the units of measure for the indicated marginal <clears throat> and then write a sentence interpreting the marginal as an increase, OK? Well, we see here the total cost, the cost, is in millions of dollars. And Q, which is going to be how much we're producing, is going to be Q million units. So if we convert this, it's going to be million dollars per million units, OK? Well, what can we do? Well, we have this unit million that's in top and bottom. So we can say, well, let's get rid of millions. And we just get <clears throat> dollars per unit. OK, so that's going to be part A. Now, part B says write a sentence interpreting the marginal as an increase. Now, remember, the marginal is the derivative. So this is the derivative that we have to interpret. OK, so what are we going to say? Well, what are we doing? This is our Q. So when we can say when 40 million units are produced, that's kind of the key here. The cost is, well, remember, when it's marginal, it's going to be increasing or decreasing. Well, this is going to be increasing by, and we now have 0.2, and it's dollars per unit. So what we're going to say is we're going to say when 40 million units are produced. And all we've done so far is we use that and we've plugged it into this here. <clears throat> then we can say the total cost is increasing by, now we have 0.2, and we've converted our units to dollars per unit, so it's by 0 0.2 dollars per unit, okay? And that would be what they want us to do for writing that sentence. 
Now that's with cost. Now this one is with revenue. And again, it really doesn't matter what we're doing. So, you know, our revenue function is R of Q and this is our marginal revenue because we're taking the derivative. So it's the marginal revenue. And so what we have is our revenue is $100. So what we're gonna do first is that units. So it's $100 per thousand units. Now, how do we solve this one? Well, again, what we did is we took and divided this by a million. So we divided that by a million and million divided by a million canceled. So we just got dollars per unit, basically $1 per unit. But here <clears throat> we need to get this to be one in the denominator because that's what we wanted. We wanted one unit in the denominator. So we're gonna have to divide by a thousand here and we have to divide by a thousand here. So when we divide the bottom by a thousand, that's just gonna give us one and we'll get unit one unit, and we divide 100 by 1,000. Well, what happens there? 100 divided by 1,000. Well, that goes down to 1 over 10. So that's 1 tenth. So we can write it as you know, 1 tenth, which is 0 0.1 or 1 over 10, doesn't matter. We can say 0 0.1 dollar, OK? However we wanted to do it, fraction or decimal. All right, now, <clears throat> what does our marginal say? Well, it says when we have 16,000 units, are sold, <clears throat> the revenue is, well, it's increasing by, now we have three times this uh, unit here because here our units were one to one here that's 0.1 to one so we have to take three times 0.1 well that's going to be 0.3 so it's going to be 0 0.30 dollars per unit okay and so that would be how we would interpret that when 16,000 uh, units are sold the revenue is going to be increasing by 30 cents or 0.3 dollars per unit. What about this one? So it says a fraternity currently realizes a profit of $400 selling t-shirts at the opening baseball game of the season. If its marginal profit is negative $4 per shirt, what action should the fraternity consider uh, taking to improve its profit. So what's happening is we're making a profit of 400, but its marginal profit is going down. So it's decreasing by $4 per shirt. So our profit is decreasing by $4 per shirt. And so that means pretty soon we're going to be kind of losing money. So what do we want to do with this one? Well, we can do several things. Well, first thing we could say, well, if, we, if we're losing $4 per shirt, let's increase the price of the shirt. So we can say increase the price of the shirt, okay? So if we maybe make it $5 more, then we're not gonna be losing $4, we'll be gaining a dollar. What else could we do? Well, <clears throat> maybe if we could find another place that would sell the shirts cheaper that we're gonna uh, eventually turn around and resell, that might be another thing. So we can find a cheaper supplier So then our cost is lower. And so then if we keep selling them for the same price, hopefully that will make it so this is not a negative anymore. And you know, what else could we do? Oh, well, we could just stop selling shirts. Now there's other things we could probably do too, but these are probably the three key ones that are the most obvious and, and what I would consider probably the, the best answers that we could look at here. All right, so let's stop here and we'll come back for more.